options. Uh, we have two examples, one of the high tech, one in the low tech realm. Um, ways again that you can collect user feedback from your uh, library users, and we think that this applies whether you're academic, special, public, um, even school libraries. Um, so without further ado, let me get into a little bit. Uh, well, I'll give you a background of what we're going to talk about, or our, our agenda specifically. We want to start by giving you all a, a little bit of background information about our institution specifically as an academic library, a smaller um, academic library. We serve about around 6,000 uh, full-time students, I think, and Karen will get into that in just a minute, um, so I don't want to steal Karen's thunder. Um, but then we'll give you a, talk a little bit about the importance generally of surveying um, your library users. Most of you probably already know that it's important, but just in case you want to want to run down some of the um, the pros of, of surveying your users. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the process itself, the process we used for both the high tech and low tech options uh, for surveying your library users. And then we'll get into kind of the nuts and bolts of things with the beginning with a, a rundown of, of the high tech option, as we call it, really the Google Forms survey, which is totally free. Um, and then also the lower tech option, the whiteboard survey. Um, and then we'll discuss, lastly, um, some of the results, which we found very interesting, and hopefully um, you all will be too. So with that said, um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Karen, and she's going to get into the background information. Well, I have to figure out how to use the, uh, oh, OK, very low tech. <laughs> well, I want to, as I say, we'll give you a little bit of background on UT Martin. We are not a huge institution. We have, although it says we're serving 7,000, I think our FTE is, is probably around 6,000, a little over 6,000. Uh, we also have five satellite campuses, and I, I don't know whether you, I don't think I can use the pointer on this, but basically our institution serves the West Tennessee area. We have a lot of first generation students coming to UT Martin, so uh, I think we serve a unique population. Uh, we additionally we have five satellite campuses located, oh probably within an hour, hour and a half of us. So we have a, a you know a unique population that we serve here. So you know finding out what our particular students need and want has been very very important to us. And and I have to give Adam Clemens credit. I mean he's the young librarian on the scene, and he decided. Yeah, let's let's just do a survey, and like I'm like, well, let's see, uh, let's form a committee, and uh, you know, let's uh, during the committee we'll form another committee, and you know, and, and Adam says, no, no, I can, you know, I can, I can do this in a heartbeat, and and I really appreciated his enthusiasm, and and as a result, we we've gained a lot of information uh, from our students, uh, you know, about their wants and needs, and. And um, I, wa I do want to tell you, I, I don't know whether it's just tattling on, on Martin or not, but um, a couple of years ago, well, probably about a year to 18 months ago, we found out that we were being put on academic probation, which was a shock to 90%, maybe 95% of the faculty on this campus and uh, members of the library. It was something that you know started back in 2012 that started at the top of the institution uh, here on campus and probably went down to the deans and there, there was probably a little pushback but all of a sudden um, about I, would you say a year to 18 months some mm -hmm. somewhere in yes, that time yes. frame we yeah. were literally the entire campus was turned on its ear you know Sachs uh, does an evaluation of your campus and they they evaluate you on you know, uh, somewhere around a hundred different things, and we were only delinquent in five areas, and mostly it was assessment that, we, you know, we were doing good things, but we were not assessing what we were doing. So we have been in a... Full-on assessment I, mode. It's really, yeah, we're in full-on assessment mode, and, and, you know, honestly, because it's just a different way of looking at everything, we now look just look at things differently as and as we've been establishing a, an, a, a culture of assessment all across campus, it's been it's been a wonderful thing for the entire university. We we no longer you know uh, count resources. You know, 
the items that we've purchased and that we have cataloged and put on the shelf. It's not about number of reference questions we've answered. It's not about, you know, the amount of staff that we have staffing various departments uh, here on campus. So now anytime we do anything, we look at it from, well, what's your goal? What is it that you want to do? What's, then what's your measuring tool? How are you going to measure to be sure? What's your benchmark? Uh, you know, what's the process involved, the, the who, the what, the where, the, the how. And, you know, gathering data is very, very important. And then how are you going to use the data? Are you going to use the data uh, to make changes, uh, you know, uh, close the loop, so to speak. If there's something wrong, how are you going to use this data to make it right or to make changes? So everything has changed here on campus. So we uh, started out. As Adam says, he decided he was going to do a Google forms. Google Google Forms. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just not that familiar with. Well, I mean, I am now, but <laughs> anyway, it was uh, Adam just you know put it together very quickly, and uh, we've used it. I mean, we had anecdotal evidence, you know, of things that we thought students needed and and things that we thought students wanted. But we now, because of these two surveys that we've done, actually have some real evidence, real evidence uh, behind it. So, well, um, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just used to somebody turning the page for me. So anyway, Adam, you know, helped develop the survey. He had all of us you know, take the survey up several times and, and we all, all the librarians here, I mean, we actually only have, uh, what, nine, ten librarians here? Yeah, somewhere around. So, there. you know, sometimes that is a disadvantage to us and uh, at other times it can also be an advantage because you get to work on a lot of different things here, not just what your, your job title is alone. But uh, in this, uh, I may, Adam may let me talk a little bit about distributing the survey in a few minutes and he's definitely going to have to talk to you about how, to, how he tabulated it and we'll talk about the pros and cons of doing uh, uh, the high-tech Google survey and then the, what we call low-tech or the white board survey that we did uh, in, the, in the front of the library. Thank you, Karen. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, just to reiterate that. Oh, we are no longer on academic probation. Right, that's it's right. It's been a great thing for the university. <laughs> that's right. And so, yeah, just to reiterate, that that has been the big thing with uh, with the surveys that we've conducted here is we're we're supplementing anecdotal evidence essentially um, to with with you know raw data basically that um, that we can then use to make informed decisions um, and that support anecdotal because our administration, uh, as I think Jim will tell you, has not been uh, very responsive to anecdotal evidence, and to an extent that's that's justifiable and understandable. But now, uh, again, in this new culture of assessment, as we're calling it here at UT Martin, um, you know, we're using that data um, to to inform inform our own decisions, but also, as you'll see later on, to to purchase. Um, stuff that students specifically have asked for, and we'll get to that um, with kind of the results uh, section. But first, uh, <clears throat> I want to give you, again, we were, we're going to talk about the high-tech and low-tech, and this is what we're calling the high-tech option, and it, it is a Google Forms survey. And I've given you a, a screenshot of, of a sample um, of the really the first page of this survey, but keep in mind this survey was done online in a digital uh, realm, and so it didn't actually look like this to the survey takers. This is a, actually a, a, like a PDF version of that survey. But just to give you an idea of how we set it up using skip logic, and I'll, I'll explain that in, in a minute. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about the development of this form. So as Karen said, it was, it did come along fairly quickly, but it was, I mean, we did have to do, at least on the front end, and this is something we'll compare and contrast later, with this version of a survey, it took a little bit more work and a little bit more time on the front end, whereas when, when Jim talks about the, the low-tech option, uh, the, the more intensive work came at the, at the, on the back end, so to speak. Um, but, but effectively, we began by meeting informally to discuss uh, collecting data regarding student needs. And we identified, um, really, that was, that was the, the, the driver, I think, behind this, was, was making sure that we were um, effectively meeting our students' needs. In your case, it may be your, if you're a public library, just your library user, specifically patrons, parents, whomever you're, you know, you're trying to target. 
Um, but in our case, it was students, um, and we know that libraries are evolving, and we just wanted to make sure that you know that they they had the the types of things that, that they need to to be successful students. Um, and so then next, we really formed a, an informal, very informal library task force to evaluate options, um, survey options specifically. And you can see the list there of some that we we uh, considered: Survey Monkey, Qualtrics, Google Forms, and then uh, Poll Data. Of course, we ultimately went with Google Forms, as you probably have, have guessed. Um, and then effectively, or the last step for this development phase was to develop questions for the survey itself. And that did, I think Jim and Karen would agree, that was probably maybe the most time consuming mm -hmm. is to, to establish the types of questions that, that we wanted to ask because we had to keep in mind, you know, again, what were we wanting to achieve with this survey specifically. And then distribution. Um, in this case, because this is an online um, survey, uh, we did a lot of online promoting and distribution. We promoted this survey um, on social media. We sent it out to, um, we all have liaison, uh, our departments that we serve as liaisons to. Um, and so we made sure that we sent it out to our various departments and requested that they send it out to, send the link out, the survey to the link, um, or share the survey to the link with two of their upper level, or one upper level, one lower level. One upper level, one lower level class. Again, trying to get a great, um, or a nice uh, uh, variety, that's the word, a variety of, of, of student representation. Uh, those that have been here for a little longer, those that have not been here for a little longer. And also this is obviously because it's online, it really allowed us to get outside of, um, you know, and target specifically people and students that may not necessarily come into the library because obviously we want to hear back from them as well. I mean, lastly, we did an in-person uh, kind of drive, the last last drive there, probably the last week or so of the survey. The survey, just to put it in a, into a time frame, I think we launched it early, this is ballpark, early February 2016 uh, and took it down about a month later, right around spring break here, which would have been early to, to mid-March 2016, so a little over a year ago now, it's hard to believe, but but as our last push, we went over to the university center, actually the, the Friday before spring break, which was not the most ideal time, but we still had a lot of success. We took some iPads um, and some candy and... and um, you took a few student workers Yeah, some student workers. Yeah, we actually had a, quite a few people volunteer from the library staff and student workers to go over, uh, again, to try to get collected just a, a few more um, responses. And we actually got about 200 more responses that day in about a four-hour period. So we're very happy about that. But that's how we distributed. And then this, I just want to show, in terms of data tabulation, Karen mentioned earlier, um, you know, or kind of hinted at how it may be, you know, complicated. It's really not, though, and that's the beauty of this version. I'm going to sneak up here and try to get out of this and show you. You see the, these are the number of daily responses here on your screen. Let me show you. Um, this, it, this is the beauty of the Google Forms and most any online survey tool. I'm just going to scroll down here um, and show you. It tabulates everything for you in a nice, nice, pretty, um, pie charts and graphs, and we get all sorts of things, and you can click on these or hover over them and it gives you the full, because as you see here, you don't see the full response, um, but when you hover over, you can see that. And you just go down the list here, and, and again, um, we, I'll just explain, because I mentioned skip logic earlier, so when we set up the, the survey initially, um, you know, we asked, the first question we wanted in terms of demographics, we wanted to know if this is a student as freshman, sophomore, junior. We even left an other section just in case because we could have possibly had staff in fact because they're library users too and their, uh, their opinions are important to us. But then the very next question we ask is, have you ever used the library? And if you say yes, which 97.8% of the respondents said yes, which is good, I think that's a good sign for us, as you see almost 600. Um, said yes, and they're taken to a unique set of questions for people that have used the library. But if a responder said no, only 13, 2.2%, then they're taken to a unique set of questions that specifically target why they're not using the library. So that's one of the really positive things about a slightly more complicated or advanced um, survey using the skip logic, which that, that's what the skip logic is. It, based on one question, it takes you to another set of questions. Um, or depending on how you respond to that initial question, if that makes sense. So anyway, I'll scroll down here quickly to give you a bit of an idea of, of how this does it. But this is the nice thing. I, I mentioned earlier how the, the Google survey was time intensive on the front end um, in terms of setting up and getting questions and all that. But it, it saves you quite a bit of time on the back end because it does all this, this hard work for you. Um, and again, you see all these nice pie um, charts and, and graphs. And then we'll get down to the very bottom, and that's the screenshot. The administration I had. likes pie charts and graphs. They do, <laughs> at least. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I'm sure most of you have administrators that that equally like uh, 
um, like to see this. Again, and as I know Jim will say, the anecdotal evidence has always been here. We didn't really learn anything overly shocking, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But Adam, um, do you want to tell them um, this is actually the most successful survey the library has ever done? Sorry, I jumped. I went back to the beginning. Uh, yeah, that's right, and that's that's. I think I'm not sure why that is, but I assume it's because of our the efforts we made to We're distributing. Distributing. I think that was the key yeah. in terms of being successful with that, because we did have over 600 responses, uh -huh. um, which is about a 10 percent response. Which I know it doesn't sound great, but in the past, Jim, you know more about it. Yeah, I mean, if we were lucky if we hit five percent. Yeah, and yeah. and and say if you look at that chart, you'll see you can kind of see. There was an immediate response. Mm -hmm. We waited and sent a reminder to faculty mm -hmm. to contact their students. Uh, then you see a little blimp, and then at the end where we actually physically went to the university center and sat out in front of the cafeteria and pestered the collect. Yeah, <laughs> for that final push, and it was really a, that was that was crucial. I didn't uh, I didn't think we'd have the amount of success we had that day, but that just goes to show if you if you go out there um, in person, um, then you really can. Well, and also the success of our library liaison program. I mean, it's mm -hmm. part of our job really to go out and to establish relationships with, you know, our various departments. You know, I have nursing, behavioral sciences, you have... Agriculture and military science. Yeah, and so, I mean, that, that, that was the nice thing about it is that we, you know, went all across campus and across disciplines as well. And that, that was very, very helpful. So that's the data tabulation again, and you'll see the difference hopefully in a minute when Jim discusses the whiteboard in terms of collecting that, that data, but let's talk a bit before we transition over to the whiteboard about um, some of the pros and cons. Um, I think one of the better, one of the biggest pros really is just a visual presentation. It's really easy to use, especially since it's Google. Uh, students these days, at least in my experience, are very comfortable using Google, maybe sometimes too comfortable, but um, but it really, you know, it works like any other Google, you know, program that that, that we've all used. Um, so it's easy to follow. Um, the skip logic that I mentioned just a minute ago, that's really, really, um, I think, crucial, especially when we were targeting specifically because we wanted to make sure we were hearing from um, non-library users as well. Even though you saw the response for HEO was still what 98% to 2%, uh, we were at least able to collect information um, from people like. 13, I think, in total, but still some from, from people that don't use the library, which their opinions matter too. Um, and then the just the ease of the data collection and the tabulation is that we just discussed. Um, it, we, didn't, we didn't have to do anything, really. I mean, we interpreted the data, but in terms of collecting it and storing it, Google does all that for us. Um, and then again, just to reiterate, distributing it to non-library users. But in terms of cons, um, the big one probably was it was time intensive on the front end specifically. Um, and the, the other things, and, and we all three kind of, I think, brainstormed about this for quite a bit in terms of how to overcome this, but it, surveys of this nature really require us as the creator, you as the creator, um, to kind of set limits and define um, responses to a degree in terms of when we give students options. We left every single question open to an extent in terms of, you know, we set up a list of things that we thought might be important to students, but then we left an other option. Another, you know, way we could have gone about this is just to leave it into, you know, a straight long essay paragraph form so the students just can document. But the reason we ultimately decided to give them some options to choose from is because that's just easier. You just click and, and go, whereas with the essays, as you all know, if you're asking for specific detailed responses on every question, uh, students are probably going to stop one or two questions in. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, I think this last point will make a lot of sense when we get into the whiteboard because it's a really big pro uh, for the whiteboard, mm -hmm. and that is with these kind of surveys, um, they're really kind of kept to each individual, um, so there's there's a lack of interactivity, and, and I think hopefully um, that'll that'll become clear here in just a minute uh, when Jim discusses the whiteboard. And with that, I'll transition it over to. Well, I just wanted to ask. You said it was, you know that that it was time intensive, but using Google Docs was easy. The Google Forms, well, yeah. Google it, Forms, Forms, yeah, me. so, yeah, the, 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 when, I mean, when I mean time intensive, it was time intensive to, as we said earlier, setting up the questions specifically. Uh, once we had the questions established and once we had the potential, you know, for the responses, um, putting it into the document, it, it took literally no time at all. Google Forms is very simple to use, and you can do pretty complex things um, and I'm not a tech person. I don't think any of us at the table are necessarily tech savvy, but it was really any of us could do it. It's pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's a good okay. good point. Okay. 
And part of what led to the whiteboard survey option is when we were presenting the Google Forms, we had some members of the staff saying, well, but you've led the students with giving them the options. Uh, this isn't open-ended. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a graduate assistant at the time and we were talking to him and we hit on the idea of just sticking one of our large whiteboards out in the atrium. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, what do you like and dislike about the library? And it was right there as students walked in the building. And one of the things um, Adams touched on is it was interesting because students would walk in and they'd see another student writing. Mm -hmm. And they would stop and oftentimes either respond directly to that student. And I'm not sure if you can, how well you can see the example but oftentimes somebody would write the library's too hot and then you'd see other people agreeing and saying yes it is but then you'd also see somebody write but it's also too cold sometimes or too, too cold for yeah and so anyway it it um, this was in direct response to this is completely open ended now the downside to that is you don't control what the students write we had a lot of issues brought up that really have nothing to do with the library. Uh, I think you can see one about the uh, computers take forever. Well, they the do. computers are in the library, but they're the IT department, not us. And we have passed that on to them. But again, we're not controlling the issues that are brought up. And so I, I think, you know, again, it gives students a chance to feed feed us what they think is important. Um, and I, I will just add, you notice it says Dr. Nance and the two Karens are always helpful. I spent a lot of money to get that up. There. I did notice that, yes, I did catch my yeah, eye. Yeah, I, I thought I better, you know, for, for uh, full disclosure, I have to, have to admit I paid students. <laughs> but anyway, if you look here, Again, this was kind of informal discussion just at the reference desk and how to respond to the uh, lack of student um, input on our original survey. We agreed on the whiteboard survey. We established the one open-ended question. Um, our graduate assistant cut out letters and within an hour we had the board out there. Um, again, as mentioned, we promoted it online through Facebook and all the various and sundry ways you promote things on social media these days. Um, again, the front end was very simple. Um, we had, again, the graduate assistant would regularly go out and take pictures of the whiteboard and then erase it. And now here's where it became a little more difficult. He then interpreted and tabulated responses. So he would look and go, well, there's several about the climate of the library. And so he would organize those under a heading like climate. Um, and so that, that's, that was the time consuming part. Um, the pros, again, there's no tech skill required. Uh, we cut out letters because none of us have good handwriting. Um, <laughs> but it is completely interactive, the students gave us their ideas, their opinions, quick and easy to develop. The time intensity part was on, on the, the final end of it. There were no nice, neat pie charts and graphs. We had to do the tabulating. Uh, it's limited to people walking in the building. We didn't get input from non-library people. Uh, very visual, issues brought up aren't always related to the library and you know, we had students, faculty, non-university borrowers, anybody that walked in the building could stop and write. Uh, I think in one case we had somebody write something that was considered uh, obscene or off color or whatever, but that was quickly solved with an eraser. So <laughs> again, not real difficult. Right. And then, I'm not sure who um, who does this part of it. It's you. Oh, it's me. We didn't have the theme. Yeah, I had one, I think. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, there we 
pros and cons, what we found. Yeah, we'll like, get there in a minute. Sorry, okay, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Correlations between high tech and low tech survey options. Uh, you know, we had, as we said earlier, we had a lot of anecdotal evidence, and I don't know that we learned uh, a whole lot that was strikingly new, but at least we have data to back up, you know, what we've thought all along. As Jim says, no surprises. Yeah. But again, our in our administration, uh, you know, we're all about assessment now, and all about proving that, you know, we, you know, backing things up with data. We need new furniture. Well. What makes you think you need new furniture? Uh, well, other than the fact that the plethora's plethora's coming off of the sofa, yeah, no, it's, it, or you know, we need more furniture. Whatever, we actually did get uh, uh, thirty thousand dollars for furniture as a result of some of this too. So they they really do uh, really do like it. And one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, I I always thought Qualtrics was the way to go with this. And you know, a, a lot of the bigger universities probably have Qualtrics, you know, can afford to pay for Qualtrics. But I actually went in and looked at uh, some of the pricing myself. And for, for Qualtrics, uh, you can spend almost ten thousand dollars getting a, a a survey out to students. Uh, th there's an annual fee of a thousand dollars. There's a registration fee of thirty two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and there are hefty fees for any type of customized analysis that you want to do. So I don't really have a figure for that. But also, you know, LibQual provides live, you know, training seminars and whatnot for and if you do that from, you know, a couple of people working in your library it can, you know, be twelve hundred dollars. Uh, consultation fees, twenty four hundred dollars, analysis of results. If so if you take the have your normal Qualtrics survey, it's a certain amount of money. But if you want any institution specific questions that you want to gather data on on the Qualtrics survey, that's an additional sixteen hundred dollars. And not only that, but you, you really need somebody in your library that knows how to work with some kind some uh, you know specific software to tabulate all this data. So you know I, I figured that was at about ten thousand dollars to do a Qualtrics survey. And I don't know about your university, but you know we're we're doing an awful lot of talking about budget, uh, and we we the the library's taken a couple of hits recently when it came to budget. So I don't know that we'll be doing a Qualtrics survey, although I'm not I'm not really uh, disqualifying the value of the LibQual Plus surveys. They're I'm sure they're very good, but I also went in and looked, and they you know they say there are only like uh, 22 questions, but once you really get in there, there are three questions within each question, and so it. And a lot of times in the LibQual uh, surveys, they're just it, it's a very very lengthy survey, and and not everybody hangs around to finish the entire survey. So and you know we did a little bit of of background uh, information gathering. The University of Washington and the University of Virginia have been doing this since the early 90s, 92 and 93, and continue to do this. So I thought, well, you know, we can, we can do this too. So if, if you want to do a little reading, uh, University of Washington and the University of, of Virginia have been doing this for a very long time and continue to do it over time. And it's a good way to uh, sort of track, you know, what's going on with your users. Uh, but anyway, let's, okay, moving right along. I just had to, to um, talk about... I do have a question, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, that you mentioned cost as a question I had. Um, did you? Ha I don't know if you mentioned this. Did you have any sort of budget for this? I know you said, you know, Adam said, "Hey, let's do a survey." But um, was there? No, you know, because I know some of the things you mentioned earlier as 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 um, options, Survey Monkey, and other ones. I know some of them do have cost. And yeah. um, were you allotted anything, or you just no? Had to no, we weren't <laughs> playing any kind of formal. You know, capacity or manner. I, I I don't know. I can't say for sure if we had gone with another option if we had asked for the money. I don't know if that would have um, been an option. But we all kind of you know we like Google Forms quite a bit. And I mean, it literally, I took a thirty-minute workshop of uh, that really could have taken ten minutes to learn how to use it. It really is that simple to use. Um, and they are really they are really slick and easy. Yeah. They are absolutely yeah. And I I will throw out a phrase that we all love to hear. 
gee, can't you do more with less? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've heard that before, yeah. <laughs> and so here we provided uh, a couple of different forms of survey and input uh, with a total cost of, if you factor in our time, our student worker time, still a few hundred dollars, yeah. I would guess, for both. Yeah. Right. But we didn't have to approach, you know, yeah. our director and ask for any money at yeah. all. And I will also say administrators never factor in our time or cost. <laughs> no. That, that doesn't seem to be a... Not generally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, I do want to show you these are some of the results that we got back about other services that students would like to see the library offer. And you can see board games, uh, board game night, projectors, GoPros, more DVDs, although we have a ton. We have a ton. Uh, trivia night, 3D printer, guest lectures. Uh, and you can see vending machines. That at one time, the library didn't have any vending machines. And, and the, just to be clear, the students could choose as many of these options as they wanted. Uh, they were not limited to you know one, two, or three responses. And then we also have the other option down there. This is kind of good, a good example of what we talked about in terms of the weaknesses of the Google um, form survey is that we did give them some, some sort of suggestions. Uh, but we always tried to leave it open, as you see down at the bottom, with the other option. Um, but as you see, only 10% of students. And that was pretty consistent throughout the survey. Yeah, but I mean, we didn't just pull these out of the air. I mean, no. we had anecdotal evidence yeah, that's right. that's right. uh, for a lot of these, especially the vending machines. Right. So you can see more charging stations. Oh, my goodness, yes. But as a result of that, we, as you can see, these are just some of the images of the things that we purchased, uh, the GoPros that students can check out and use. Um, all kinds of charging equipment and in addition to charging stations, the charging equipment that students can just check out. And uh, down there at the bottom there's a projector. We bought some projectors that students can check out as well. And probably the big coup is definitely our vending machines <laughs> in the 24-hour lab. Uh, you know, students have been asking for something to eat and drink forever. And we do we do allow our students to eat and drink in the library. We don't have any more messes than we did, you know, when they weren't allowed to bring it in and they were sneaking it in in their backpacks. So. And, and we never had vending machines though, right? And then yeah, mm -hmm. in, in the library in spite of that. And so this yeah, we were able, I think as a direct result, I think we used this anyway to, to convince our administration to to let us purchase these vending machines. And they've been used Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, I don't know whether at your university you may have the same problem that we do. We are we have a coffee shop just outside the 24-hour lab for the library, and we were, I, I guess, the, maybe competing with Sodexo a little bit. Uh, our dining service. Our yeah. dining service here on campus, but we were able to get the Coke machine and the snack machine in, in the 24-hour lab, which it's you know, right next to Sodexo's little area out there. Um, also, we got a 3D printer now, and we have a lot of our engineering students use that on, on projects and whatnot. And there's our information. Yeah, and so, um, and we're happy to obviously take um, questions, but just in case, I mean, if anyone's interested in, you know, more detail about how to use Google Forms or, or any of those sorts of things, please, by all means, contact any of us. You can call, email, however you, whatever you want to do. But I will say, too, there's lots of informational or instructional material available on, on the Internet, as you'd imagine, specifically YouTube, if you're, you know, just to kind of give you the basics of Google Forms or other survey options that you have. But again, contact us if you have um, questions, too. Yeah. I have a question. Adam, if, if, People were interested. Would you give them the questions that we asked our students oh, yeah, if they yeah, were yeah, if they were so inclined? Yeah, if, you, if this is something as a starting mm -hmm. point, or if you want to use it specifically, we're, we're librarians. We we're, we, we share. believe in sharing. Yeah. We're all about sharing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a good question, Karen. Yeah, to, if I I know I was trying to figure out what are the good questions that we can ask or should be asking. Yeah. And there'll be some that might be specific to your own institution too. But, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think yeah. it just depends on, because again, we the questions we asked were, the, I think, for the most part, the right questions for us. I wouldn't say that, you know, conclusively, but I think we asked the the best questions that, again, were because we had a specific sort of targeting goal in mind, and then based on what, what we were trying to achieve with the surveys, that obviously then kind of dictates and defines what are the best questions. So yeah, we'd be happy to share ours, um, because you guys may be having some of the same 
um, well, some of the same goals, I guess, that we have. And so, but it also obviously varies from from institution to institution. Absolutely, absolutely, that's that's correct. Um, the one thing. Um, it, it did spend a, we did spend a little time in the beginning with the Google survey getting the questions right and you know we found that you know maybe I didn't interpret the question the way somebody had written the question up so we did we did go through and and try to tidy up our questions and uh, you know that did take a little bit of time but I think also spending time thinking about your questions because if you want to collect data from your users over time well, you, you'll really need you know some of the same mm -hmm. questions to, to use year after year as you track you know different trends with your users right the change of their opinions and everything yeah mm -hmm. I, I like that idea that you had mentioned earlier that you um, kind of tested it on your own staff Yes. Had your own people look at it first. Use so some usability testing of the survey. You know, is, are these questions? Do people understand them? Are they the right questions? Is there a different way we should have worded it? Or just under knowing that, well, Karen thought it was asking this, but I meant this. Let's just keep that in mind when we get our answers and see what the students tell us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> see if they Andy, how they yeah. may have entered. Yeah. Right, and, and to get an idea of the the amount of time that the survey took, I think Jim or Karen one mentioned. Um, you know, we didn't want to be, we didn't want to have a five or ten minute survey because that discourages people to take, the, well, to finish the survey. And so we really mm -hmm. made a lot of effort to keep the survey under under two minutes. And I think a lot of people took it in less than um, yeah. in a minute, minute and a half. Mm -hmm. which oh, you know, nice. Of course, to dictate that. Yeah. And, yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned is we also have a, a student advisory group that we, uh, we call the Slackers, the Student Library Advisory Committee. And we got input from them on a lot of the, you know, and, and these are representatives from the major organizations on campus. Student government. Student government. Mm -hmm. uh, sororities, fraternities. Sororities, fraternities, the veterans groups. Um, you know, and then we have some just open slots. So anyway, we get input from them, and that helped form the questions, and then we also had them help evaluate the questions. Mm -hmm before we sent it out. Uh, oh, that's so. nice. So student input are before it became a official yeah, right, right. thing. Nice. Yeah, um, I'm just amazed that I'm, a, I'm really amazed at how much information we were able to gather. I was amazed at the responses that we got back, the number of responses that we got back and how much how really how how little we spent. I mean, I, I technically we didn't really spend anything. Well, I think we bought cokes for our slackers. Yeah. I think we <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. You mentioned candy at some point earlier too. Yeah. Some of the candy was involved. Yeah, food is always a good enticement. Yes. A good, yeah, a good we job. probably unofficially yes we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we did have uh, questions here. Um, if anybody does have any questions, please do type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and we'll get them answered for you. Um, and you did mention someone has a question. How did you get people to answer the online survey? I think you did talk about places where you promoted it um, earlier. Right. Well, I think probably the most successful was the fact that you know each librarian has subject departments across campus and you know that as time has gone by it's been very very important for us to establish those relationships so you know I did wasn't just sending an email over to the head of the nursing department you know I could contacted Peggy Davis and say, hey Peggy, can you do me a favor? You know, can you take five minutes at the end of your class and, and ask your students to log on and do this survey? Nice. It, I think that that's important is the relationships that we've already established across campus and and, and that applies no matter, again, we're speaking from an academic library perspective, but if you're at a public library, wherever you're at, of course, it's to Karen's point, it, it is Mm -hmm. Building the relationships with your, you know, your your heavy users and a public. I worked in a public library for a couple of years, and I remember we had our, you know, every every week, every day visitors. Um, you know, if you're, you know, you can use those people, I guess, to get, you know, get get feedback and, when, again, whatever environment Absolutely. you're in, I think it's the relationships. Yeah. Are, or reach are, out, like you, you, I mean, Karen, you talk about reaching out to other departments in the, um, at the university. Public libraries could reach out to other city departments or other yeah. groups in the in the in their town or, or or city that are could help them promote the fact that the the library is looking for input. Um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, I would yeah, I would be if I were in a public library, I would be you know 
uh, contacting churches, contacting them at the schools, and just yeah. organizations or any your meeting of, rooms. Yeah, organizations. And, and, exactly. and social media too. Of course, you have to have a um, you have to have a following on social media, and we're working on that. Jim's been doing a lot of good work there. Yeah, both of the people that follow <laughs> us are pretty excited. <laughs> we have much, much more than that. We've, we, as a matter of fact, we could even do a, we could do a little seminar on. Uh, getting our so social media numbers up, but that's an, a different topic entirely. But you know, sure. I, you know, Adam showed you the um, the graph where you could see there were peak days mm -hmm. when yeah. students were taking the surveys, and those were times when we, you know, contact. Maybe probably the first one was when we initially contacted the faculty or the, you know specific faculty members about. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about doing the surveys, right, having the students do the surveys, yeah. and then you can, you know, going along, and then you can see the little subtle reminder there, oh, by the way, if you haven't had time to do this, and to ask your students to do it. And we even have one professor, Jim, well, it might have been yours or, or Adam, one of your faculty members, so they just gave it out to all their students in all their classes yeah. and asked them to take it, so. That's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, and I think that's tied to us keeping the survey very short, too. True. I don't know how long they would have been to have passed on a survey that took 28 minutes. Oh, yeah, if no, If it takes no. under five minutes. Well, I wouldn't have been willing well, to do I it. Would, <laughs> I, would have, I wouldn't have been willing to do it. So, Karen, you had said that you thought contacting the professors really helped. Did you ask a question in the survey, um, like they sometimes do ask, how did you hear about the survey to see, to figure, to try and yeah, determine what was yeah, the best I, promotion? I think, but, yeah, we um, should be making notes right now to add that. Absolutely. That really yeah. Because yeah. I know well, sometimes people yeah, are yeah. curious. I know a lot of people have trouble getting the word out about things like this and trying to figure out, well, what is the best way for us to do it, which is going to vary, of course. Like you said, if you got a big social media following, there you go. But... Mm -hmm. Well, big for UT Martin. Yeah. <laughs> it's all relative, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so let us know, in conjunction with the survey, how much participation did you get, like, you, um, compared to how many students you have? Um, yeah. Well, I'm, the online survey, we got approximately 10%. And obviously, I'm going to pull that up while Jim's talking. And then, yes, of course, with the, idea. and I guess that's another weakness of the whiteboard, is there was no monitoring how many different people wrote. I mean, the same student could have came in every day and written the same thing. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Yeah. yeah. No <laughs> right. Right. You see, there's six hundred and two responses total, which again equates to about six per, uh, ten percent. Ten percent. Of our on campus. Um, but then again, how long? How long did you have the survey available for? Uh, it was about a month total. That's approximately, approximately a month. Yeah. Okay. You saw kind of the ebb and flow of the response rate, sort of heavy at the beginning, middle, and end, and there were in between periods of just you know flatlining. But sure. and then we've actually just coincidentally got a pretty good even distribution. It does look like that. Nice. <laughs> Coincidental, but senior, junior, sophomore, and freshman, which is actually ideal in terms of what we were trying to achieve, and then we have a nice cluster of other, which I assume is probably faculty and staff, and then we would have. A, we don't have many graduate students on campus, no. so we weren't surprised that we had a very small uh, sampling of their um, opinions. But yeah, so that that's effectively the um, the number of responses in a nutshell. Good. With the Google you, survey, not the um, not the whiteboard. The whiteboard, right, right. Yeah, of course. Um, are you planning on doing this on a regular basis? Uh, yeah. Karen, you had mentioned making sure you have similar questions every time. Is this going to be a regular? Well, you can always add new questions, but you want sure. you want to have a nucleus of questions that persist. Well, well and because you know we're at a uh, you know a university, and so obviously the seniors last year this group in green, they would have already, most of them I assume, graduated last year, so they're no longer right. here, and we have a fresh crop of freshmen who we have not um, surveyed. So that for us, it's really important for a lot of different reasons, but because of the kind of the, the turnover that we have that's inherent in all universities, um, we right. want to continue to attract their, their interest because things are evolving quickly for us as a profession, but you know, every student that comes in may have different and unique needs, and we need to be able to hopefully meet as many of those needs as we can. Well, I, the, I was going to say, the other thing I like about the Google survey is it is easy, and I have the idea, we haven't done it yet, but we probably will get to it, is having specialized surveys for either specific majors, specific disciplines. Uh, we could survey all of the off -cam just off-campus students or mm -hmm. as students enrolled at just a specific center. 
so it's it's easy to earmark who you want to get input from. Now again, sure. what kind of response rates we'll get when we do that, I can't say. But to me, that seems like uh, you know, like we we get a lot of usage from our international students. So we we probably should do a survey aimed just at our international students mm -hmm. and, and find out what we're doing right for them and what things are they looking for that we're not providing. Right, because every group is going to have different needs. And that's going to be a survey. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I said it's because every group's going to have different needs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and you know, as time changes, we have, you know, different demographics of international students coming. I don't know whether it's the economy or what, yeah. but you know, right now we have a lot of uh, Middle Eastern students right now, and in the past we have had uh, a lot of Japanese students a lot of Asians, and Asian. Yeah. Uh huh. So you know that changes. So it's a good idea for us really to do that with our international mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Uh, or find out what their what their yeah. needs are. I mean, we have talked to our international students, and we we've actually gotten some magazines in their language so they can check up on the on mm. soccer. <laughs> yeah. Of course, yes. Um, question about the survey itself. Then I've got another one. I'm going to go back to also. Um, looking at actually these two questions here that you can see just the bottom of that the second one there. Uh, someone is asking, um, did you correspond the answers to the status of the students? For example, do you know that most of those who have never been in the library were freshmen or was it other? Like somewhere along the line, down the line was there, you know, right. what their status yeah. was compared to what their answer was? That's a very good um, question. I'm, I'm trying to think if I'm going to be That's able to That's an analysis it. type thing, yeah. Yeah, there is a way, because this is kind of just a summary page, but right. with all of these Google surveys, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back and just see if I can do this. So I have no idea what's sure. going to happen here. Um, but um, basically, you can pull out of the, it's a Google, I don't know what Google calls their Excel form, but it's the Excel spreadsheet, and you yeah. get line by line each response. So yeah. you could pull any of those numbers out, and I'll see. You can do all sorts of data line. manipulation with that, yeah. Absolutely, yes. I, I was going to say, the answer to your question is yes. I'm gonna yes, and I'm gonna try to show you though, if you don't mind me. I may be really close to the camera now too. So no, I'm you're good. <laughs> Wait just a second, because I would like to show you that. Because that is a good we, question. We've, we've told Adam more than once he has a face for podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, I was least, just I was just gonna say he had a big head. <laughs> well. <laughs> Um, well, you look at on the, our view. It's a smaller little camera view off to the side. Good. Just okay, look nearly yeah, as big as you might think. I'll pull this up if you want to. If there are more questions, we can get them while I'm pulling this up. Sure. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know. Actually, since you're actually going into Google Forms, this is actually a related question. Does Google Forms? This is about creating the survey itself. Does Google Forms guide you through building the skip logic questions, yes. or does the person design the survey link them? Uh, yeah, we here. Uh, yeah. Let me. I don't take up too much time showing, but the I'll just put them already here. I'll go. This is how you would begin a form. Um, and again, there's plenty of videos out there. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, this is what it looks like bare bones. Um, and in this case, if we ask this question, whatever the question is, and I believe it's, you so and you can you know take whatever type of format you want, multiple choices. And this is a short answer paragraph. You choose all those things, and then based on the uh, response here. I don't know if it's going to work because we don't have anything else. Let's see if I duplicate it. Um, let's see. I'll put something in here just to, because typically once you do this, add other, you can go through and add, and there's, well, I don't see it showing up now, but you're supposed to be able to, to drop down and skip to question whatever. But basically, yeah, you, to answer the question, you do it. Um, it does guide you through to an extent, but you're basically in full control here, and you create, create the questions. And then, for example, in this case, if we say, you know, do you use the library, yes or no, and on, on our mm -hmm. form, let me go back to our form specifically. I think that may be easier because it's not cooperating now. Sure. Um, and I'll show you, like, basically, you just achieve two things, hopefully, with this. Let's see, library usage. Um, and then, on the inside of the form, this is what it looks like on our end. And so this is the, that's really, I don't have a mouse here, so this is hard for me to navigate, but... Um, what I was talking about earlier, so this is a good example here. So, have oh, you ever used the library? This is question number two. Uh, this is I did this myself. Go to section number eight if you say yes, and uh, section number two if you say no. So these are those unique questions that a person that says yes is not going to see any of these questions. These are all targeted to people that don't use the library. And then we get down to section eight, which should be this next one here. This is where someone that says yes, this is where their survey starts. Sorry, I meant to stop, but it's just catching up. But um, 
to answer it. It looks, and it looks like there's a little pull down next to it that you can then choose which section you want they need to jump to or you want them to jump to and you can That's absolutely up that. that's right. Um, and what is there another question? I know it was coming to show this in this earlier and now I don't remember the original. Um but. well it was about the if the oh the stat the basically the, the evaluation, the analysis of it corresponding oh, the yeah, answers. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. okay. So here, this is responses. This is the page I was on earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and then you click on this little icon. That, yeah, Google Sheets. Sheets, that's, that's what they call it, yep. Yeah, and so it's going to populate. You see how, I mean, you get just every response, and this this is right. a very long document. Mm -hmm. Right. Less or right, too, but that's how it works. So, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and you can organize it by status. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sort it in all sorts of different ways. Yep, absolutely. Right. So that's what's nice about this about Google Forms, and I'm sure a lot of the, even the ones you pay for, they spit out a lot of good Oh yeah, yeah. things Definitely. you can use to manipulate the data and, and decide what you want to compare and, and look right. at. Yeah. And while right. I'm just really quickly, I'll show you what it looks like. You can do a preview, and I'll show you how it, because it, I did section, oh, well, <laughs> I can't show you, never mind. Oh, um, yeah, you haven't closed, you have not accepted responses right now, yeah. But because it's section by section, um, you don't see, it's not just a full line, it's basically page to page, so when you respond to this page, and not, you know, you go to the next page kind of thing, and that's, you have to do that to use skip logic, but again, mm -hmm. it, for those of you that have questions on that, that there's plenty of, there's plenty of information on the, on, on the internet, on Google, on YouTube, and if you have specific questions too, I'd be happy to, to help anyone if you had our contact information yeah. um, up earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Well, it's good to see that at least a little bit in in the the back end of it there. Right. Um, we are almost at eleven o'clock. Um, it's ten fifty nine. Does anybody have any last minute, desperate, urgent questions they want to ask right now? Uh, get it typed into your go to webinar questions section there, and we'll get it um, asked. Um, well, this was um, really great, guys. Um, Thank you. Congratulations has no longer been on probation, as you said before. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, anyway. it, it turned the whole campus on its ear, mm -hmm. I promise you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is something that definitely that everybody should be doing, evaluating and deciding what you're doing. But um, anyway, yeah. I'm glad that... Now, were you already thinking about doing this survey before that came up, Adam, or was it just a coincidence? No, yeah, this, to be honest, no, this Are wasn't anything. Um, driven by that particularly. I think it was just okay. yeah, originally because I'm fairly new here and, and Jim and I actually were talking mm -hmm. about um, you know get, understanding and you know what what our students need right. and specifically cool. to support the anecdotal evidence because we were getting nowhere with anecdotal stuff. We can't just yeah. say as we said before you can't just say well students are telling us they need this. We know they and that's the thing to reiterate that this, we didn't really there was nothing just majorly surprising about either one right. of these, at least from our perspective. We knew most of these things already, but now we have mm -hmm. the you know the data to take to administration. And, and you know, saying... we were in a meeting, and they kept talking in the meeting about how students walking in the door numbers are down, students you know various things were down. Mm -hmm. And after the meeting, Adam and I were talking, and it's kind of like, well, instead of just saying. Why don't we ask the students why they're not using yeah. the library? Yeah, that's Absolutely. Doesn't yeah. that make sense? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you said um, when you're new, it's a good way to find out what's going on in my new yeah. my university. Um, but and I liked also earlier on one of the slides, the administration they love the numbers. They love yeah. the administrators, people in charge love the hard data because they can you know just saying oh yeah we get a lot of students asking about this is very vague, but saying. Right. 50% of students uh, surveyed say they want vending machines as well. Yeah, well, we had, really... over, yeah, we had over 300 students say they want vending machines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been saying for two years, why don't we put vending machines in? We've got students coming in at night mm -hmm. when the coffee shop's closed. Or coming in early in the morning and the coffee shop is closed. Right. But, yeah, yep. but now Absolutely. we have a number that says, oh. Yeah. And, and plus, most of the librarians here on staff have a reputation for not being real honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you want a vending machine for yourself? <laughs> uh, the one thing I, I wanted to mention about surveys, too, is the, like the University of Washington, they do theirs on a, a three-year cycle. Now, that's mm -hmm. not to say they don't use uh, LibQual Plus as well, but the, as far as the the surveys, I, I'm i happy that we won't be doing it every single year. I, I, I guess I just wouldn't want to have to ask the faculty do it to do it every single year. 
Yeah. So we'll, you know, we may go two years, three years before we do it, it, this same survey again. And it also helps, at least from our perspective, and I know we're basically out of time, but um, really quickly, uh -huh. uh, this, you know, the, developing strategic plans and stuff like that, and that may be, you know, every typically, you know, five years or so. Five-year plans develop, usually, yeah. Plans. Um, and so that obviously, at least in the academic realm, um, these kinds of things can really help target that. But we've talked about that already. I mean, you can do whatever you want. In fact, Jim and I are currently working on, uh, we're surveying study room usage or study rooms around the state of Tennessee, specifically in academic, other academic institutions, to effectively uh, for our own doing, benefit yeah. to see are we providing the same amount of, of group study rooms as, as other institutions around the state and even our, our peers around the, the region. And so it's given us really quick and easy information to see, to rate ourselves basically, to make sure that we're meeting the, what seems to be the, the socialization of the library. Students are mm -hmm. very much interested obviously in collaborative work. And that's also a product of the, the assignments that students are being given these days. Everything kind of hinges around it. See, every, I shouldn't say everything, but a lot of student assignments have uh, some group or collaboration group, component. Group work, yeah. You know, those needs, yeah. All right, okay. Um, you had, you Tap the camera a little bit over, and, and Karen's cut out of it just at the end when you're using the laptop. There you go. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> just want to make sure she's in there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. Get that up there at the end. <clears throat> All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody typed in any other questions while we were just chatting here at the end, so I think we will wrap it up for today. Um, thank you very much, Adam and Jim and Karen. Um, as I said, this is great, good info for people who want to do any surveys anywhere, really. Um, there is their contact information if anybody wants to get in touch with them with any other questions. So um, thank you, everybody, for presenting for us today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, so we can see here. Do, do, do. There we are. Yeah, if you want to, you can turn off your camera. Or just close that camera window there. On that GoToWebinar interface, there's, you can, there's a button for the webcam. There you go. Um, all right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Okay. Um, this is the session for today. Uh, it has been recorded and will be on our Encompass Live website, which I'm going to show you right here now for everyone. Um, Encompass Live um, is actually the only thing that's out there called Encompass Live at the moment for everybody who's att our attendees. So if you just Google us, you'll find us at the top of your search results. Um, we're also part of the Encompass or the Rascal Library Commission website. Um, these are our upcoming shows, but right beneath them is the link to our archives. And this is last week's show. Um, this is where the same one from today will be posted here. We'll have the recording, um, the slides. Adam, if you can send those to me when you get a chance. Yes. Yeah. We'll post them here. And I have been collecting links in our Delicious account. Um, the Library Commission here, we use Delicious to collect uh, websites. So I've got the survey and the different um, software things that they had mentioned along with Google Forms all linked here so you'll be able to access those um, all afterwards. Um, when this is all done in processing I will email everyone who attended and registered for today's show. Uh, sometime this afternoon look for it. Depends on how quickly uh, YouTube cooperates with my uploading. <laughs> Um, and I'll let you know when the recording is ready. Um, so that will wrap up for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is UNL Extension, The Learning Child Co-Parenting for Successful Kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is uh, from uh, Linda Reddish, who's from our, uh, an extension educator at uh, Douglas Sarpy County Extension, which is just up Omaha way, um, is going to be on the line with us um, to talk about the program they're doing, which um, they uh, want to connect with libraries to provide this kind of um, uh, support for children in situations where they are um, co-parenting due to divorce, separation, whatnot. Um, they do a lot of work with libraries, so definitely um, sign up and join us. That's next week's show. Um, please do sign up for that one if you're interested in any of our other topics coming up here. These are our May shows. I've got other ones I'm working on. Yes, the 10th is not in here yet. I'm getting that one finalized. Um, just keep an eye on our um, website here and you'll see all the new ones coming up. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page, which I have over here. Um, so if you are big on Facebook, give us a like. I post um, about our shows. Here's my reminder for this morning saying log in now on the fly for today's show. Um, also, our recordings are on here. Here's what I most posted about last week's recording um, being available. So if you are big on Facebook, as I said, give us a like and keep up with us over there. 
other than that, that wraps it up for this morning's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.